try to make the best decisions that will positively influence all students. So that that we may have an orderly and productive meeting. The rules are this meeting will last no longer than the time advertised from 5 p.m. until 6 p.m. If you would want to leave, you can. Please do not speak until you have been recognized by the chair. We will not no, please be brief and to the point. We want to listen to as many as possible within the time frame. Comments will center on the ways to improve the school system budget and other concerns. Personal issues should not be voiced tonight. And before we begin, I would like for each our board member to introduce themselves. Of course, we know our school superintendent, Mrs. Miller. And um, please come to our board meetings every month. They are held the first and the third Tuesday from 6 o'clock at the uh, county office. Open meetings. Thank you. I'm Vienna Hagen. District 3, Board Chairperson. Clyde Alexander, District 4. Barn Offer, District 5. Tina Johnson, District 1. Kenny Hall, District 2. Um, job 
Dogs and Honey is another um, dose of, um, of stimulus money that came about this year. We've been holding on to that, waiting for next year to come and help offset some of that shortfall. So all in all, this year we had to cut roughly $2.1 $2 million out of the budget. Does that make pretty good sense? I notice you are going to cut the bus routes by three driver, cut three bus routes and three drivers. Uh, which, do you know which routes it would be yet or? Three uh, bus routes, uh, 
will dictate the specific ones. Uh, but as you know, being spread out like there are, anything we can do to stop the two buses from having to run over the same road, we did get them. Would that extend some kids' bus t time on the bus, though? Um, like, um, I don't think it would because right now we have some drivers, especially here in the league area, that are trying to coordinate uh, between the elementary uh, and the high school, or 6 to 12 group. I think one of the things we want to be able to do is see if we can coordinate that even more, maybe uh, work with the school time to where they can be coordinated that would accommodate that. Um, we wouldn't have any drivers that would actually be uh, losing a position. Uh, we've been trying to get ourselves in a position where we could do that, so uh, I think we'll be able to do it. I hope we can get three out of them. Okay. Okay, I noticed on here where it says reduce district administration by one director and one administrator. Would administrator be like a principal's position or someone in the school board office?
at every meeting because if the third meeting and fourth meeting would have benefit of items on the list that the first meeting and the second meeting didn't have. So we agreed that we would just send the same list, but that was an idea that was um, thrown out. Um, in fact, at the Central School it was mentioned to cut the high school by one assistant principal and the Central School by two assistant principals. Since it's middle this is not the same list um, because on that other list it was a different format. And as a matter of fact, um, it had our GED on it and all that stuff and whatever. So the Dean of Students was on there, and it was thrown out by the crowd, and I mentioned it too. So I think that, uh, I know that it should be listed here. But, but those suggestions will be, those, those suggested cuts and the money will be on the list. Yeah, you guys start that. My understanding is that we will come back and have our general board, board workshop. And you guys will be able to look, view everything that came out of all the town in this one. shorter school year if you said you had to have a certain number of hours does it, you still have to add up to 180 days okay 
the, would the hours add up to days? Is what I'm saying. Would y'all have to go into the su- extra into the summer for a four day work week, or um, the school year would be? But like, if they worked on Friday, the same schedule you were talking about Monday through Thursday, could they have a shorter, a shorter work week? I mean, not a shorter work week, but a shorter school year. But, like, would the extra eight hours a week that they're putting in, would that add to a six day during the week? The extra time on the four day work week would equal to the fifth day. But I'm saying if they did that on the fifth day, if they could, it would add like an extra eight hours a week. Right, and shorten a school year. No, sir, 180 days. But I don't understand because, I mean, like you can do it with a short work week, but you can't do it with a longer work week. That would be so hard on students and the teachers. I know, but that was just something. Yeah. I think the 8 to 4 for the students would be really hard. It would.
has one one way where it saves two hundred thousand, and then the other it saves four. Well, the one where it saves the more is where it reduces your bus drivers down to sixteen hours. And but see, all that part would have to be negotiated. And then those are the people who would not make an input. Oh no, that's that was mine. Oh, that's your point. Those are the Things on here. What's the external contracts? What contracts are you talking about? Uh, it's like, I can't name them all, but some of them, like we have a contract to do uh, lawn service at the Central and uh, uh, the high school. Uh, there's a contract with uh, Mr. Uh, Hutchinson. Uh, there's there's several of them. Andy might can name some more of them. Uh, I think there's one with tech, some technology stuff. <coughs> I guess the, the Higgs. This cut, Jay, like what, every is contract. Not Ma'am, is that cutting every contract? Is that what that means? Well, then those are the people that we have to keep here who can do it themselves. Like, you know, we have people who come in and write contracts. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, we have people who are writing contracts. So we, you know. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm going to say that the Higgs is going to have to be
possibility. The possibility of transportation to go to school choice. What percentage of five to twenty? That's to be used for SES, which is something on educational uh, services for tutoring, after school tutoring. And part of that also goes to choice with transportation to pay for those kids coming to leave. But it's not an, an, an additional money. It's taken from the top of the Title I allocation. And if, if it if it I'm so if it means that we need more teachers, does that mean they come from wherever kids came from? Sort of the mix would still be about the same number of teachers. We, right. We would have to look at um, class size reduction. How many students are coming from where? If a teacher from there was transferred to here, would that still let them need class size reduction? It's a I know, balance. I know that. So. <laughs> If, if kids came from everywhere, three or four from everywhere, and they leave over what it was just three or four and there wasn't, couldn't make it, then it would have to be an added Supplements. Is that talking about coaching supplements for the coaches, or is it? Um, that's talking about everything. We've been cutting everything educational and nothing extracurricular, nothing sports. Right. And education is our mission, right. not sports. I, I think that includes the supplements, and also there's about there's an activity bus that that takes kids home from practice and stuff. I think the actual supplements, and Andy can correct me if I'm wrong, is probably around $107,000. And then the, and the, the, the I, I, if I remember right, the, the actual bus is $20,000 a year. And I'm, I'm assuming that includes Central and the high school. So is that all of the athletic? That's not, this is just a portion, right? That's all of the that's all, That's the all the athletic supplements. Supplements. Plus twenty thousand. Plus twenty thousand actual sure. supplements is a hundred and seven. Then the activity bus is uh, you can figure twenty thousand dollars on the activity bus. And that's high school and middle school. Yes, ma'am. I know when I was in school we had to get a ride home or we didn't play. That's exactly.
the board has awarded extra days for like curriculum coordinators in the summer after school is out, after post planning, they would get five days after post planning, and then they would get five days before pre planning to help close out and start up the new school year. So that 10 days extra pay, then curriculum coordinators would not be getting that. Save money there. Most, almost all of our consultants are paid out of grant funds. 
10% of your school's allocation, you know, has to be set aside for professional development. Down here where it's talking about board restricted travel from general fund, is that for field trips or is it for people like school board members or for? That's a great question. Um, most of our field trips in our school system, the students pay. Um, they either have fundraisers at the school to raise money for the field trip or the teacher figures out the cost and writes the letter to the parent and says this is how much the field trip costs. So most field trips are um, paid by the students. Um, other travel for um, school board members, um, district staff, for um, me, for principals, um, would come out of general fund if it wasn't associated with a grant. Um, because Ms. Hubbard is our director of federal programs, most of her, type, most of her travel comes from federal money associated with the grants that she works on. So any travel that was not funded out of the grant would have to then come before the school board and the board could say yes or no if it was going to come out of general fund. It looks like you'll have a savings of 35000 if you cut that. Would that seems like a whole lot of travel for, I mean, I think, I know y'all have to go to PACE and different things like that. Is that paid for out of grant money or? The, the travel to PACE is mostly out of general fund, isn't it? It depends on who's going and what they're doing. But, um, yeah, there's some, if, if it's a big that's true actually just general fund travel, which is, um, you know, sometimes there's a professional development for bus drivers and for um, non instructional staff. That um, there are no grant or like Title II will pay for. So then General Fund has to pick it up and it'll you know, include everything from the ninth state uh, to mileage to per diem, which our per diem is $3 for breakfast, $6 for lunch, and $12 for dinner. So we're not paying exorbitant amounts. The board lowered that quite a few years ago when we first started declining. And, um, our mileage reimbursement is 29 cents a mile. So it's, it's not like we're paying 50 cents a mile. And, Thirty-eight dollars a day or forty dollars a day. It's just, it's just that based on professional development requirements. That's just how much people go. I'm gonna have one more question. <coughs> There's a lot of things on here. You know, when you were talking about the curriculum coordinators not getting paid the five days before and after, it seems like a lot of free work. You know, teachers are going to be working a lot, but they're not getting paid for it. Support staff and all those things. Is there a plan in place? If you have to cut salaries, how are you going to attract and retain qualified, talented teachers if you have to continue cutting the pay? It's a great question. <coughs> Dr. H, you want to talk about recruitment? Well, in our district, um, we have been actively recruiting, uh, and that is a concern for us. You know, the pay and the benefits package is one of the things that new teachers look at. Uh, I do think that it will affect that if we continue to uh, decline on the pay scale. Uh, one of the things that the system has done uh, the last three or four years uh, before we got into this situation have become very competitive with our pay scale. Uh, but everybody's in the same situation. It's not like we're here by ourselves. So uh, I think we will be, be able to be competitive, uh, but we will uh, get in that situation where we've got to be mindful of that and see what the surrounding districts are doing where we can't be competitive because it is going to be an issue. One of the other things, too, our county receives a um, race to the top funds for one of the districts in Florida that um, apply competed for the race to the top funds. Um, in the race to the top funds, um, one of the areas is about the recruitment and retention of teachers. And so um, hiring quality teachers and um, paying them, um, uh, not a supplement, but an incentive to uh, work at a low performing school is written into that grant. Um, performance pay is also written into that grant. So um, with the legislature.
legislature passing Senate Bill 736, performance pay will be starting for all of our teachers. And so um, that's one of the ways that our district could fund that is with the raise of the top funds. So um, having your students perform so you can receive an incentive for the extra pay for performance um, is it's in place in our district because we have raised the top funds. A few years ago, we had help like uh, Sparsley. We have legislation to let us get money from Sparsley because of our, you know, our district, and our rural district. They cut a lot of this stuff out. They started cutting that out because the large districts, they were upset about it because like, their money is for North. And that's why a lot of things are going on right now. If they could cut us off, they would. Where would we put them? 
look at what the state done with DOC. See, when you privatize, then you're not having to worry about the benefits and retirement and all that. So there probably would be a savings. Hamilton tried it, and the trouble they had was their savings got eat up by what went missing in the school. <laughs> So, so they, they quit after a year because they had a lot of stuff going missing. Now, I'm not going to say that that's, that's, that's not going to happen. And when Dixie Packers privatized their maintenance people and all that stuff, and when Dixie Packers closed. Mr. Jordan. Yes, uh, privatization is a negotiable item. Yes, sir. And uh, as it relates to the savings that we may be able to get from privatizing those particular services, uh, you lose the security of the people that have been working with you for such a long time. And the kids are used to it. And the privatizers, when they come in, they bring in people that nobody knows. They are very transitory. They move in and out. So privatization is not a good move uh, in any circumstance. My wife won't talk as the union man. <laughs>
our, our electricity budget, I mean, well, our utility budget is $1,135,000. Of that, about $700,000 is electricity. So if you can save 15% of $700,000, it's $105,000, which is either four non-instructional jobs or um, two, two, maybe three instructional jobs. So it, it's having a real impact. We're happy with the progress. Thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> 
right. We're just talking about our sale plans. Oh, sorry. No, we didn't. Jack, what's the issue?